This problem might look a little bit complicated. For what integers n is this expression an integer? Now, this expression on its own might look a little bit complicated. However, remember, when, whenever you see fractions, fractions just represent division, nothing more complicated. So this rational expression is literally a division of polynomials. That is, we can literally divide the polynomials to make this expression easier to analyze. Because on its own, how are we supposed to know when this top part is a multiple of this bottom part? So let's divide the polynomials. I'll walk you through how to do that. To divide polynomials, we take our division symbol and we put our div dividend polynomial, <laughs> we put our dividend polynomial inside. So in this case, it's our degree four polynomial that we're putting inside, okay? And then on the outside over here, we put our divisor polynomial. That's gonna be eight n plus three. So as you can see, very similar to regular number division. Now our quotient polynomial will appear on the top. So what's our first term? What's the first term in our quotient polynomial? Well, it's going to be 2n cubed. And the reason for this is if you take 2n cubed and multiply it with this divisor polynomial, we get 16n to the 4 plus 6n cubed. And then when we subtract, as per usual in division, we, we have 16n to the 4, they cancel out over here, right? And we have the n cubed terms. This would be 8n cubed, right? And then now we can drop this negative 5n squared from here. And we just repeat the process. Simple as that. So over here, our next term, we want to multiply it so that this 8n cubed will disappear. Well, our next term will just be plus n squared, because when we take n squared and multiply it with a divisor, we get 8n cubed plus 3n squared, and then subtract. This cancels out, so that's negative 5 minus 3. That's minus 8n squared. <laughs> and we repeat again. So over here, we can take our next term as minus n, because negative n times 8n. Oh, and we can, we can also drop this uh, negative n if you want to, right? So just drop to here. And then now, as, as you see, this negative n times 8n, that would be negative 8n squared. And then negative n times uh, 3, that's minus 3n. And then subtract. So negative 1 minus negative 3, that will be 2n. And then we drop this negative 6. And then finally, we need to make this 2n disappear when we do the subtraction. So how do we do that? Well, our next term is not going to be an integer term. It's actually going to have to be a fraction term because our next term will be 1 over 4. When 1 over 4 is multiplied with 8n, that produces 2n. And then 1 over 4 multiplied by 3, that's plus 3 over 4. And then we do our subtraction. Now, we just have to do the subtraction. We do 2n minus 2n, that's, well, that cancels out, and we have negative 6 minus 3 over 4. Well, that would be negative 27 over 4. And this is our remainder. Now, think about what that means. When we took our larger degree polynomial and divided it by the smaller degree polynomial, we got a quotient polynomial, right? And we have a remainder. So to complete our answer for this division, we have to add this remainder divided by the divisor polynomial. And you might be wondering, why is this so? Well, think back to regular division. If you take something like six divided by four and you know do the division, so that's one on top, four over here, minus that'd be two. If you think about what this means, this would mean that six divided by four is literally the quotient one and then plus the remainder two over this divisor, four. So you can see that this is literally how the, the answer for division works. In the same way for polynomials, we have a quotient polynomial and then plus the remainder, right, divided by the divisor polynomial, which is this one, right? So therefore, you can see that, you can see that this is our, this is our result from dividing these two polynomials. Okay, so here is our result. Notice that this is way easier to work with because since n is an integer, then this 2n cubed plus n squared minus n, this part is automatically an integer. So we just have to worry that this plus 1 over 4 plus this fractional part is also an integer. Firstly, let's simplify this part. So this is equal to 1 over 4 minus 27 over 4 times 8n plus 3. Now, because 1 over 4 is already a fixed constant, 
we just have to worry about this 27 over 4 and sorry over uh, 4 times 8n plus 3 right and one thing we must conclude is that since we want to get rid of this 1 over 4 fractional part it must be the case that 27 over 4 times 8n plus 3 this is equal to some integer m and then plus 1 over 4. This is so in order to get rid of this fractional 1 over 4. Observe that if you were to substitute this with m plus 1 over 4, this will be equal to 1 over 4 and then minus m and then minus 1 over 4. This is equal to negative m. And there we have it. This is an integer because m is also an integer. Now, you might be wondering, isn't there another form? Namely, shouldn't we also be considering m minus 3 over 4? Well, that's actually a very good thought, but we do not need to consider this because, indeed, if you do make the substitution, you would get 1 over 4 minus m plus 3 over 4, giving us, giving us negative m plus 1, and this is obviously an integer as well. But notice that this can be rewritten as m minus 1 and then plus 1 over 4. And notice that these two forms are basically the same things. They're just some integer and then plus 1 over 4. So you'll eventually be getting the same answers by considering both of these forms, right? So there is no need to consider both of them. They are congruent. I know they don't appear the same, but they are congruent. Hopefully you know what, that, what I imply by that. Now let's simplify this expression. We can multiply both sides by 4, giving us 27 over 8n plus 3 is equal to 4m plus 1. And we can multiply both sides by 8n plus 3, giving us 27 is equal to 4m plus 1 times 8, oh sorry, plus 1. <laughs> so plus 1. Plus 1 times 8n plus 3. Now notice that because m and n are both integers, and because 27 is a product of two integers, therefore we are only looking for factors of 27. And by looking for factors of 27, we can solve for m and n, right? So let's do that. What are some factors of 27? Well, one possibility is 1 times 27. So we can set 4m plus 1 to equal to 1, and then 4n plus 3 to be 27. So over here, if you were to solve for m, m would actually be 0, okay? And over here, 8n is equal to 24, n is equal to 3. And this is one such solution. We have that n is equal to 3 will make this expression an integer. Now, are there more? Well, we have to see. Firstly, notice that another possibility is negative solutions, right? Negative factors, rather. So if we have negative factors, then we would have 4m plus 1 is equal to negative 1, and 8n plus 3 right, plus 3 is negative 27. So over here, 4m is equal to negative 2. Uh-oh, m, m is negative 1 over 2, but this is not an integer. And even if this was an integer, if n turned out to be an integer itself, this would not be valid because m has to be an integer along with it as well. So this is not going to work out. Okay, so now we need to consider more factors. Another way to consider it is 3 times 9. That's another way to write 27 as the product of two integers. So we have, we can set 4m plus 1 is equal to 3, so that gives us 4m is equal to 2. m is not an integer, so we don't need to consider this anymore. But what about negative 3 and a negative 9? Well, we have 4m plus 1 is equal to negative 3, and we have 8n plus 3 is equal to negative 9. So over here, 4m is equal to negative 4. m is an integer that passes, the, that passes the test. So now we can solve for n. So 8n is equal to minus 12. Uh-oh, n itself is not an integer now. So this will not work. So bye-bye. <laughs> so now we can now consider 9 times 3, basically swapping the previous case, right? So now 4m plus 1 is equal to 9, and then 8n plus 3 is equal to 3. Well, first of all, is m an integer? Well, this would be 8, and m is 2, an integer. Okay, that passes the test. So over here, we have 8n is equal to 0, n is equal to 0. Wow, would you look at that? n is equal to 0 is a solution to make this an integer. So n is equal to 0, I'll write it like this, n is equal to 0 is also a solution. All right, so now we just, we just have to consider the negative factors. What if we have negative 9 times negative 3? 
Well, that would be 4m plus 1 is equal to negative 9, so 4m is equal to negative 10. Uh-oh, m is not an integer, so too bad, so sad. Final case is the, we, we swap our very first case, 27, 1. Now, we have 4m plus 1 is equal to 27, and 8n plus 3 is equal to 1. So this would be 4m is equal to 26, and over here, well, sadly, m is not an integer because 26 over 4 is not an integer. So that's not, that's no good. So now we just have to consider one last case, the negation of the factors. If we have 4m plus 1 is equal to negative 27, and we have 8n plus 3 is equal to negative 1. Well, this would be 4m is equal to negative 28, and yes, this passes the test. So m is equal to negative 7, that's good, and then now 8n is equal to negative 4. Uh-oh, n is not an integer, so this will not pass the test. Altogether, we've considered all possible cases to write 27 as the product of two integers. So now we have two solutions, two values for n, and these are all the values of n, all integer values of n, such that this is an integer. Now there we have it, finally. <laughs> now the basic idea is that, remember, whenever you see a fraction, fractions are no more scary than just regular division. And when you divide, you can see that the expression is way easier to analyze. And in that way, you can get your answer pretty quickly. This is very useful for number theory. Anyways, thank you very much for watching this video. If you, if you found it interesting, then please do consider dropping a like and subscribing. Thank you very much. Bye.